languages that I, you know, I'm constantly studying, focusing on. But very rarely do I actually get into the nitty gritty of like me actually studying. I think I'm a private studier. If I study on camera, I just freeze because I'm focusing too much on how I hold my pencil. How long have I been studying? Am I actually like being productive? You know, all that stuff. So um, we'll see how this goes. So yeah, I'm going to be bringing you guys through just the study weekend. It's Saturday. And also I have some stuff going on tomorrow, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it light for today. I want to do some vocab. I have here like some vocabulary that I took um, from a lesson on Wednesday, and I would like to put it into my Quizlet cards. And I think I'm gonna do some classic German grammar drills. Now, if you've been here for a long time, I'm talking like two years since 2019, a long time, you know that this book Hello. <laughs> on my channel is like a sacrament. If this book told me to jump off a bridge. I would consider it. So we're gonna keep it very classic study video today. We got some vocab going on, got some grammar. Tomorrow it's gonna get interesting because I do have a German lesson, like a live, well not live, I guess. How live can video chat be, right? Uh, but before we get into any studying, I wanted to talk real quick about some books that I got recently. You're gonna be like, what the f when it comes to picking books, I'm the most unpredictable and kind of disappointing person to talk to. Most people, when they're learning a language, they're like, oh, I want to read Harry Potter, I want to read Percy Jackson. For example, Polyglot Progress. Abigail, thank you so much. I, however, chose to order bilingual editions of Shakespeare classics. We got Romeo and Juliet, or Romeo and Julia, and we have Macbeth. Bitches be like, how can I learn German? Oh, I know. I'm going to read a 500-year-old English book. Thank you. So these books, they are bilingual, which just means that on one side they have the English version and on the other side they have the German version. I don't know how much help this is going to be to me in, like, in terms of my German fluency. Uh, because, you know, as the entire English version is Old English, I'm assuming that the entire German version is an Old German. So I am never in my life, in my German-speaking life, going to get the opportunity to just say on the street, Keinen Hasen mein Herr sei denn ein Hasen einem fasten Zeiten pastete mein Herr, der etwas schall und ehrwürdig ist, die er ausgegeben wird. Never in my life, you know. Doesn't mean it's not exciting. So the first thing that's special about this dictionary is that it's all in German because I am trying to push myself towards that, you know, ledge of only learning in German or trying to learn in German as much as I can. But the second thing that's special about this is that it's German as a foreign language. So this is a dictionary designed for people that are trying to do exactly what I'm trying to do. I got this tip from Deutsch mit Benjamin. He's a, he does like a fully like German immersion channel where he teaches German. And he was like, yo, if you're trying to do this and trying to learn completely in German, you should be looking up words in German. And I know what you're going to say, Elise, why the hell are you using a physical dictionary in 2021? There's a lot of you know, fully German dictionary sites? That answer I do not have for you. But for some reason, it's just like, first of all, this book is designed especially for what I'm trying to do. And second of all, it's pretty. New books, pretty. New books, fun. New books going in the pile of books that I haven't read yet. Exciting, right? Anyways, let's get to studying. <laughs> So like I said, I use Quizlet to study vocab. It is a great site, it's classic. I've been using it literally since high school when my French teacher put me on. I know that there are other flashcard apps out there, namely Anki. I think that Anki and Quizlet are always like the butting heads in the vocabulary department in terms of flashcards. I do not understand why people like Anki. Yeah, it has like this really like cool algorithm system of like when to review certain words and like the forgetness curve and whatever. The f it is not that serious. It's not. <laughs> That's just my opinion. You know, language learning is supposed to be fun. And when people start bringing numbers into it, it brings back memories of fucking pre-calc in high school. And I do not wish to relive those anytime soon. So I'm gonna keep it cute. I'm gonna keep it simple and fun. I love Quizlet so much because it's not just flashcards. There's also like a lot of different activities you can do. I think they still have like this asteroids game you can play. It keeps you engaged because it's not just the same thing always. And I will admit I've never tried Anki. It's just the impression that I have from stuff that people told me. It's basically just a flashcard app. I do not like that it has a really unattractive user interface. Like for me, I couldn't use something that is that just boring looking and mathematic. I really, I just, I'm sorry guys. I just don't get the appeal at all. So anyways, yeah, I have some words on this little notepad that I'm gonna put in for my new set. And then I also have some on my notes on my laptop. So yeah, let's get started. I found the street of the house in which she's Before I 
put vocab in this set, there was only like six or seven words and now there's 76. So yeah, I would definitely describe my vocab process as like, I do it in hordes. So like every maybe three or four lessons, I'll take all the words that I wrote down during those and just add them all to a set because I think I would go crazy if I did that multiple times a week. It's very tedious. I prefer to just get it all in one go and then maybe throughout the week actually use the cards. Well, I don't know about you guys, uh, but all that vocab's got me feeling hungry. I wish I had a little salad or something. Oh wait, I do have a little salad. Mm -hmm. It's a salad. I don't know, I try to do stuff in between my studying activities so that I don't get burnt out. Because if I did all my studying in one go, I don't think I would like studying very much at all. Isn't this better? So much better. And before we move on to grammar in a little bit, I wanted to talk real quick about an app that I use for vocabulary. Keep in mind Quizlet does have an app, so I also use that app technically, but um, Closemaster is just an app. It's a pretty simplistic kind of app. It's um, basically fill in the blank type of responses where you just, they give you a sentence and you have to fill in the word that's missing. They have different sets. They have like, I'm pretty sure they change for each language, but in German, for example, they have like 100 most common words, 500 most common words, and it goes up to like over 50,000 most common words. I'm currently working on the 3,000 most common. I mean, they even have grammar challenges for if you want to fill in the blank for some grammar stuff, but I think this app is mostly vocabulary. And it's cool because you can see the words in like real contexts and it's not just, you know, like a static kind of word in a vacuum. You know, I feel like vocab doesn't stick as much when you just see it in like a raw form. You know, this is real. Highly recommend 10 out of 10. Not sponsored, but I wish it was. Why is it so dark? <laughs> so if you're anything like me, you hate studying in drab dormitories, right? That's why we're going upstairs to my favorite place in the world, Purgatory. It is literally just the second floor of my building, but it has a table and a window. Book. Book. What more could you need, right? Let's go. See, now isn't this better? We got full open window, floor to sunset, open space, intimidating chairs all around. Much better, right? So this is how I approach grammar in a book. I would not recommend it, just saying that up front. So I work in this book out of order. There is no order, there is no reason, and that's okay. Um, I kind of just look around to parts that don't have anything in them, and I'm like, why don't they have anything in them? <sighs> Honestly, I should do it by topic, but uh, when in this Inspiration comes, inspiration comes, you feel me? So I think most recently I was working on review three. Oh, and we have one page left. Very nice. So yeah, this book is split up into sections and then after like a couple of sections or a couple of like chapters, so to speak, they give you like a review on all of that. So there's a lot of chapters, three reviews, and then like a final review and an answer key in the back. Pretty nice. So this section is going from direct discourse to indirect discourse, which just means, for example, Martin spricht gut Deutsch versus er sagte, dass Martin gut Deutsch spreche. I was never good at indirect speech in German because it requires a different conjugation. Like, what? stupid if you ask me, but I love the language, so I do. I don't remember how to do this at all. See, we're just like raw dogging it, honestly. Oh, I shouldn't use that phrase on my channel, sorry. That just means doing something without any preparation. <laughs> but it also has another meaning. Yeah, indirect speech blows. You know, I get it makes you sound fancy and whatever, but at what cost? Does this look like the writing of someone that knows what they're doing? Does it? I mean, it doesn't help that I don't read directions, but uh, not the easiest topic. Like, I get it. It's just that like they want it such an exact way. It's irritating. <sighs> okay, well, I guess it's time to correct it. Let's do the before and after. Not too bad. I only got like three questions wrong. Okay, look at, okay. This side, we all make mistakes, right? But this side, Flawless. Not one mistake made. This was the easier stuff though, so I knew I was gonna get that. It's a little bit confusing because you have to like match the tense of the first clause to the second clause. Like, okay, listen, so like his cousin used to live in Denmark or lived in Denmark back then. Er sagte, so you think it's the past, right? So you can just put it in normal, what you think to be like simple past version of the conjunctive. Er sagte, dass seine Cousine damals in Denmark wohnte. I thought that was, uh, yeah, I thought I did that. No, I didn't. What the f is gewohnt? 
Habe. And after I got that one wrong, I was able to predict what the next answer would be for that one, for example. So I don't know. I feel like a lot of German grammar study is just picking up on patterns, not asking questions and just going with it. I think for the conjunctives, that's what I'm going to have to do because this shit is like wicked, wicked. I like to use my resources for as many possible things as I can. So even though this is a German book, whenever I see a word that I don't know, you know, it doesn't really matter if I don't know what the word means. I can still conjugate it and use it in a sentence, but I do like to learn what the words actually mean. So like, yeah, manum. Let's look it up in my handy dandy dictionary. Yeah, manum. E R. How do people do this? How did George Washington do this shit? Did they even have dictionaries back then? Jemand nachdrücklich dazu auffordern, etwas zu tun oder sich in bestimmter Weise zu verhalten. Oh, so it's like to give advice. Yeah, or recommend maybe. Verbieten. What's verbieten talking about? You know what? I think the greatest development of my four past years of being a serious YouTuber in college is that I don't give a fuck if people see me talking to myself anymore. I think that's, you know, an accomplishment that I should be and am very proud of. Oh, verbieten, verboten. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. To forbid. We literally use that word in English. Verboten. That was a waste of time. Well, I've had more than enough German for the afternoon and the evening and probably the next 23 years. But best believe I'll be back at it tomorrow. I think I have a lesson at like 9.30 in the morning. Gute Nacht. Good night. Hallo, wie geht's? Gut, ein bisschen müde und dir? Ich auch. Ich bin tatsächlich bin ich gerade aufgewacht. <lacht> und ich habe gemerkt, in Deutschland ist es halt so, je teurer der Restaurant ist, desto, also desto weniger geben die Trinkgeld. Aber ich, also es gibt also diese. Tippkultur, ne? Ich wusste es das heißt, nicht. Also ich dachte, in Europa gemeinsam gab es das nicht. Es ist unterschiedlich. Zum Beispiel in Spanien keine gibt trinken. Also das machen die da nicht. Well, that was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I literally couldn't even tell time at the beginning. I was like, is this 9 or 9? It's not a clock. It's 9 o'clock. 9 or. So let me show you guys my setup for when I take lessons. So here I have Skype or Zoom or whatever I'm using that day. Here's my tutor. Hi, queen. Um, and then I always keep word reference open. Word reference is the best online dictionary for, it has a lot of languages, but it's good for getting definitions with, of words that have like a lot of different connotations. For example, like the word root or roots. It gives you like a lot of different possibilities based on the context. And in the case that I do find words that I need or like that I was looking for, I always keep a notebook or sometimes I'll put it in my digital notes, but since I already have two things open, I don't want to crowd it. So I usually just write down my new words on a notebook. So the reason that I always have a dictionary open is that like when I'm, you know, taking a lesson and I can't find a word, I'm not just sitting there like, oh, uh, like snapping my fingers waiting for it to come to me. I can just look it up if I really need it. But that doesn't mean that I always just automatically look it up. Sometimes I try to explain it in German to just like get the word that I'm thinking of. Like I was, I was just looking for the word slavery. So I was just like, ah, wie sagt man diese diese Zeit in der Welt, wenn wir schwarze Leute von Afrika importiert haben, um kostenlos zu arbeiten? And she was like, oh, Sklaverei. There you go. So I try to do that uh, most times. If I can't, I can't possibly think of anything, any words to use to describe it though, I will just look it up to save time. Because time is money and I don't want to sit there looking like a dummy being like, uh. But yeah, that is my setup and my system for taking lessons. So it is now 3 p.m. I had that lesson, then I worked for a little bit and got some brunch. I think I want to listen to a podcast, but I also need to clean. You see where I'm going with this, right? So I'm gonna do my dishes and clean my room and clean the floors while I listen to an episode of Easy German. I don't know if you guys know Easy German or just Easy languages in general. It's like kind of like a language learning network that makes, you know, videos. <laughs> So yeah, we're just gonna do some chores, rock out to some German speaking. That was lame. I'm sorry. Okay, Geld ist etwas Schlechtes für die Welt. Finde ich interessant. Ich hätte ja gedacht, du bist ein Typ, der schon als Kind gerne reich werden wollte und schon mit acht davon geträumt hat, mal zu Wer wird Millionär zu gehen. Ja. <lacht> Das schließt sich ja nicht aus und das ist eine perfekte Überleitung, denn meine nächste Frage für dich wäre, wie war denn oder welche Rolle hat Geld in deiner Kindheit gespielt? Hast du Taschengeld bekommen? Wenn ja, wie viel? Hattest du ein Sparbuch als Kind? Wie war das denn in deiner Kindheit? 
I think that's enough cleaning. I certainly feel clean. I cannot wait to sit down on this. So I'm gonna call a break for now. I I know that I wanna study at night. I don't know if I'm gonna do like actual study or just something fun though. I'm kind of leaning towards something fun like writing or just watching a movie with German subtitles or something. It's kind of hard to find good German stuff on Netflix. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. If you guys have recommendations you would like to put down below, please do not hesitate. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. It was a great decision for past Elise to say she was going to do something chill, like watch a movie or, you know, a show in German or something. Do something chill in general because uh, my lady times have hit. I am now hot and in pain. And I feel like my brain got flipped like a Krabby Patty, so. I'm going to consume this legal marijuana gummy. Oh wait, it says this is for sleep. I don't wanna get sleepy, oh no. I should learn how to talk about this in German. I should learn how to say weed in German. Krass. Hashish? They say hashish? Also, ich habe es nie auf diesem Kanal gesagt, aber ich rauche sehr, sehr selten. Krass. Um, in meinem Staat, in Florida, ist es nicht um, legal. Krass zu rauchen. Also man kann es für äh, vielleicht Schmerzen rauchen, aber so äh, Recreational, das kann man nicht. Also ich werde diese Marihuana-Gummi essen, vielleicht 30 Minuten warten und etwas auf Netflix ähm, anschauen. Also ich hoffe, dass also die, die Gummi mich ein bisschen entspannen kann. Sehen wir mal, wie, wie stark es ist. Warum sieht es so aus? Warum so? Hmm, why do edible gummies always, always taste so bad? Always. Ugh. Oh god. Mm. Mm. So I'm gonna show you guys how I find stuff, uh, like language stuff to watch on Netflix. So I have this um, extension or like an add-on on Chrome called Language Reactor, you can see it up here. Fun fact, the real ones know that it used to be called Language Learning with Netflix, but they expanded to YouTube, so now it's called Language Reactor. But Basically, its original purpose was to give you double subtitles, so you would have like German on top and English on the bottom, or maybe you'd have Hindi on the top, German on the bottom, you know, you can put double subtitles at the same time, you can bookmark words that they're saying in the show and stuff like that. But the cool thing is when you go to your Netflix homepage, there's an extra tab up here called Language Reactor Catalog, um, and here's where you can search for content based on the language, so because I want to watch something in German, I go down to German. Um, and you also have to click your country because, you know, different stuff is available in different countries. So I am in the United States, of course. I don't care about the genre, I'll watch anything. So it found 38 things for me to watch. Honestly, there's not that much stuff um, in German on US Netflix, I don't think. Compared to like, let's see, Spanish. 258 titles, dude. So, you know, the pickings are slam for all us German learners out here. So yeah, you can scroll down and see all the stuff they have. We got, what we got here? We got Dark, um, Kein System ist sicher, Babylon Berlin. I'm gonna give Dark another chance, I think. I started watching it a couple years ago and I was just immediately like put off because like they're fucking right at the beginning and then somebody like kills himself on top of the super confusing like timeline and storyline. It was just too much, child. It was too much. Who knows? Let's give it another chance. It's one of the only good things they have, I assume. And to activate Language Reactor on your computer, you just hit that button down there and yeah, you can edit down here like, um, you know, what it translates it into and whatnot. So let's see if I can, I can do this again. One minute, 37 seconds later. I do not need double subtitles. Let's turn that off because literally everything they have been saying up until now, I have understood perfectly. Stop selling yourself short. If you can understand the German, put it in pure German. Honestly, maybe I'm getting a little cocky. We'll see, but I don't think I need it. Story short, that did hit me like a brick. So ich konnte sicherlich gar nichts aufnehmen, weil ich so ich denke, ich war nicht high. Ich war so so entspannt, dass ich auf nichts fokussieren konnte. Ich denke, mein neues Review für Dark, also die Folge, die erste Folge hat mir gefallen, aber ich denke, es wäre besser, wenn ich nicht so hart auf alle die Figuren fokussiere. Also für jetzt werde ich mit Dark weitermachen, aber wenn es zu kompliziert wird, 
ja, lasse ich es auch weg. Ja, ich kenne ganz viele Personen, die es weggelassen haben, weil sie also einfach kein, keinen Bock haben drauf. Keinen Bock darauf haben. Aber tatsächlich, äh, jetzt muss ich welche, ich habe zwei Vorlesungen heute und eine der Vorlesungen ähm, beginnt in 30 Minuten. Also ich habe immer noch meine Pyjama an. Okay, let me get the fuck out of here. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching me prance around in German all weekend. I know this was a long one. Take care, stay healthy, all that, yada yada, bye bye.